Now, typically, as a general rule, any week that I could tune into Raw and watch a Samoa Joe crush and squash a taxi stand and then watch The Miz beat the brakes off of Dolph Ziggler and then come back for more to help the continual burial of that never was, never will be piece of crap. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! I would typically say that Raw was good. Or at least it gave me elements of something that I could enjoy in a schmazza three hours. And at least Raw gave me that. It gave me those two things. Anytime that I could see Taxi Stan, the Uber driver, get squashed. Anytime that I could see a continual burial of Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! That's good. I need more of that. More. More. More! Injected right into my veins! But you look at this week's show, perfect example. Lots of stuff on the show was just really feeling like filler. There's several matches with guys you hardly see, and they're just there, and then it just happens. Uh, Bobby Roode had a match. Anyone? I guess No Way Jose. Where did that come from? The Viking Raiders are squashing people still, and nobody cares. And you just look at that. Oh, uh, the women's tag team title match was defended on Raw. Okay, cool. Doesn't matter. Um, there's a lot of stuff that just really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. But a few things that did on this week's show. You got to start Rey Mysterio and Andrade. It was a two out of three falls match. And haven't they had a match like this already before? I even come to a match like this. And while it's cool for an Andrade to win two straight falls, not every best of three falls match needs to go all three falls. I look at this match and I'm like, what's the real point here? What are you hoping to accomplish? It really doesn't do a whole lot of good for Andrade to beat Ray in two straight falls when just a few weeks back, Ray got squashed to hell by Bobby Lashley. I'm just saying. Yes, Ray is absolutely a legend. And like I said, if I wanted to trust a guy to fill 15 to 20 minutes of television time and put on a decent match that could entertain both the people in attendance and the people watching at home, Ray is one of those dudes at the very, very, very top of that list. But this just feels weird. Like, we just throw Ray out there, have him lose, and then afterwards we're having him talk about his kids and his family and what he's got to do and he doesn't know what this means for his career. It's just... If you're going to work that type of angle and you're going to do something like that, it should at least matter and it should at least have significance. And forgive me for not buying in to this company doing something with Andrade after having a beat Ray like this. You know, it's bad enough they were doing the whole mask angle and crap and no real story to that, just doing it over and over and over again. Now you've got Ray losing and bitching out jobbing here and... What's going to happen the next week with Andrade? He's just going to be another guy? Like, this is the type of stuff that I don't understand. This is the type of stuff that they do. This is the type of stuff that ultimately isn't a payoff in any way, shape, or form. But nonetheless, I digress. The 24-7 title stuff was pretty good this week. And it got back a little bit more to what the hell it should be about. Uh, and I got to say right now, if we get to the end of the year... And there is any feud that is voted ahead of our truth and Drake Maverick for rivalry or feud of the year, people have to be smoking something. They must be smoking something. This is clearly the feud of the year in WWE, and it's not even close. Not even close. The Revival are both champions, and our truth still finds a way to get his belt right back. This is an example of interjected comedy into wrestling can work and work very well, especially if it is well done. This week I thought was cool, and even Elias hitting R-Truth with the guitar shot and winning the belt. Yay, Elias is 24-7 champion again. Yay! Can we stop interrupting him? And can we stop having him lose the frickin' ricochet? Good Lord Almighty. Ugh. I just want to vomit. I think there are two predominant things to talk about on this week's Raw, though. Number one, the boss is back. Sasha Banks is back. She's legit. She's a boss. And she's heel. When you got Natalia talking about her dead daddy 
And Sasha Banks comes out and attacks the brakes off her, and she whipped off the purple wig to show the blue hair. Oh, baby, that's when you knew it was serious. Here comes Becky Lynch out to make the save, and here comes Sasha Banks with them good, clean chair, chair shots, including one or two that accidentally hit her in the back of the head. So people are excited about this. People are geeked that the crybaby is back. Get the bottle, get the pacifier, get the rattle. <laughs> what a great lesson this says. Whine and cry and be stomping around and rolling around on the floor because you got to lose your stupid ass belt. So that way you go away for several months and you come back and you're put right into a predominant storyline on the show. Into a predominant angle on the show with the champion Becky Lynch. You know what, if anything, good for Sasha Banks and a lesson learned for other talent backstage. Don't just roll with the punches. Don't just take the shit. Stand up to it. Go away for a little while. They'll come back to you. As far as the whole thing of Sasha Banks being cool and being legit and being all of this, eh. Yeah, at one point in time, I was kind of high on her. Now, not so much. I really would have been high on the heel turn if she would have went with the blonde colored hair that she was showing off on social media just before this because to me, that could have been a statement against Alexa Bliss about, oh, if you have this type of hair and you look like this, you're going to get pushed no matter how much talent you do, or in Alexa's case, don't have as an in-ring competitor. That, to me, was that dynamic that could have potentially worked. But she went with the blue hair, whatever. Apparently, she wants to be bald completely by the time she is 40. Whatever. But at least I can say, if nothing else, you feel like you have somebody that's a little more legit to go up against Becky Lynch in the weeks to come. So I'll take that. I'll take that. What I won't take is this perpetuation of the Seth Rollins' is Cool Tour. It continues. And is it ever going to fucking stop? It's bad enough you took the belt off of Rollins at Extreme Rules via the hands of Brock Lesnar cashing in to only then come right back at SummerSlam and have Seth Rollins win the belt right back. He's beaten fucking Lesnar clean twice, and mind you, he had injured ribs. I like Roman did that shit. Let's call it as we see it. We know it's true. People would be whining and bitching and complaining about it. Talking about, oh, Roman can't even say you're fucking weeb. This is a fush. This is a fush. You know, all the shit we talk about, Roman being forced, and there are definitely elements of that is true. What the hell would you call this with Seth Rollins, and in particular this Raw? If this doesn't prove that the Seth Rollins Force Tour continues, I don't know what the hell does. Opening promo segment, lame. Typical Rollins in his grating, annoying voice on the mic. And believe me, if anybody knows about grating, annoying voices, it's me. So I am a fair judge of that. Oh, we're going to throw AJ Styles at him. That'll make him cool. So then later on, you got Stone Cold Steve Austin making an appearance in part to promote a show that was coming up on USA after Raw, yes, but via Skype. And again, he was on Skype interrupting his porn time on national television. Don't ever say shit to me about my quality of mic ever again. To talk predominantly about what they said. Fucking Rollins! If you have to go to these levels and you have to go to these extremes to try and make somebody cool, I emphasize again, maybe you're putting your efforts and energies into the wrong fucking basket. Seth Rollins opens the show. One of the featured hour main event segments is fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin. And he's talking all about Seth Rollins and pumping him up to kingdom fucking come. So that way we get to the main event. It's Seth Rollins. It's AJ Styles. Oh no, the OC. What a stupid ass name for a team. It's like an old Fox dramedy. Fucking A. They attack him. Here comes Ricochet. He can't make the save. So that way Braun Strowman comes out. Braun Strowman. And he cleans house. And at the end of it, he goes and gets the title and hands it back to fucking Seth Rollins. So this is how desperate we are. We got to have Rollins lose the belt 
just to immediately win it back for Brock Lesnar. Invalidating all the attacks and everything else that had happened to him. Building him up to some be some type of super monster god here. To then he's getting the opening promo segment. He's got one of the true greats of all time, Stone Cold Steve Austin, sitting there pumping him full of gas for several fucking minutes via Skype. Like, who even uses Skype anymore? Who even uses that? To then the main event. Now we're going to throw Braun Strowman at him next, and the next title match for Seth Rollins is going to be Braun Strowman, which feels like the epitome of a lose-lose situation? You're going to take Braun, a guy who has actually kind of organically gotten over with a push, not a force. Big difference. Part of the reason I don't say force is he has zero world championships to his credit. How many does fucking Seth Rollins have? How much shit does they have to throw at Seth Rollins' way for him to still not truly be over as a mega baby face star? To now, you either A, have Braun Strowman beat Seth Rollins, which is just stupid because it's Braun Strowman beating the guy that beat Brock and not actually beating Brock Lesnar because for some fucking reason they're okay with Seth Rollins beating Brock Lesnar multiple times but we can't have Roman Reigns do it clean one-on-one, 100%, even one time, or a fucking Braun Strowman, which is inherently more believable than Seth fucking Rollins! Or even worse, Seth Rollins beats Braun Strowman. Braun yet again fails in a chance to get a world championship, which hurts him, does not help Seth Rollins, does not make him any cooler. It's just stupid. If you have to go to these levels to force somebody, they're not that dude. I mean that. And yet WWE persists. It's almost like, it is almost like you want to employ reverse psychology here. And say all of a sudden, you know what? We think Seth Rollins is cool. We really like Seth Rollins. We want to give him one of the biggest reactions of the night. Because then you wait for that moment in time where Vince is like, eh, you know what? I don't like Seth anymore. Let's bury him. Like, that's the type of shit we're dealing with here. You go against it, and clearly Vince has an idea in mind. You continue to go against it. Vince is just going to stubbornly dig in his heels more. Maybe it's time to employ reverse psychology and actually pretend like Seth Rollins is cool. Because by us pretending that Seth Rollins is cool, maybe that'll expose to Vince McMahon that he isn't fucking cool and he never will be. Oh. Like with all the other shit on Raw, there were sloppiness and botchiness. Like Ricochet had a really bad botch. I'm sure everybody's going to blame on Elias. It takes two to botch sometimes. I'm just saying. You know, lots of... Just sloppy, rushed-looking stuff of this show. The one thing that lingers is just how obvious this force job with Seth Rollins is. It's to the point of complete and total resentment now. I think you've even reached past levels of Roman Reigns' resentment. Because what people were perceiving as a force with Roman, the hell do you have to say with this shit that they're doing with Seth freaking Rollins?